Hi, Paul Meeks here for Worthington Products, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Tough Boom series of waterway barriers. Now, many of you already know Tough Boom, but here's something you might not know. There are actually two versions of the Tough Boom. The original Tough Boom that most of you probably are familiar with, this is a 16 inch diameter by 10 foot long boom, and it allows you to go up to about 120,000 pound load capacity. But Tough Boom has a big sister, and this is what we call the Tough Boom XL. This is a 24 inch diameter boom. It's 15 feet long, and this thing goes up to about 150,000 pounds of load capacity. Friends, that is a lot of strength and a lot of capacity. So what is a Tough Boom series of booms? What's it made out of? Here's the thing. Tough Boom is made out of rotationally molded plastics. Your wall thickness on both of these is about a quarter of an inch. And if you want to look at this in terms of a life of the boom, you're going to get roughly a 15 to 20 year life out of this series of booms. Do we have Tough Booms that have been out there longer than 15 or 15 years or 20 years? Absolutely. We were at a site up in Wisconsin a couple years ago and we had a boom that was probably about 25 years old and it was doing just fine. But generally, you're going to get 15 to 20 years. So if you're thinking budget-wise, think in that zone. So what is familiar about these booms? Well, you've got the external encasement, which is made out of rotational molded plastic. And then inside each boom, there's a solid core of non-water absorbing, what we call closed cell polystyrene foam, styrofoam. And then inside that, on the bottom of each boom, we have a heavy duty steel channel. Now come with me, I'm gonna show you in the tough boom unit, here's a cross section of a tough boom. So you have your, your, your external encasement with the wall thickness, you have an internal foam core, and notice this thing fills up almost all voids within the boom, and it doesn't absorb water, and then you have a steel channel that runs through this. Now let's take a look at the XL, and we'll show you what's different. This is a four inch wide by 5.4 pound per foot steel channel. In the Tough Boom XL, we go a little bigger. The Tough Boom XL has the same foam core that you're used to with the other Tough Boom, but in this case, my gosh, folks, we are putting a heavy duty steel beam in here. That gives us our load capacity. But what else is important about these steel channels? Really, what we're doing is steel sinks, by the way. So we need this big boom and this foam to keep all that steel floating. So really what we're doing with both our tough boom and our XL is we're running a steel beam across your channel, your river, your reservoir, whatever else it is. And we're using that float, the this encasement and the, boom, and the styrofoam to float this thing to keep it visible. And we want it to be visible. Now, no matter how you're using your boom, if it's for a, a uh, debris control, there's always gonna be a public safety focus in there. So because of that, we wanna make sure that if someone were to brush up against these booms, if they fall out of a canoe, kayak, or if their boat breaks down, we want them to be able to have what we call self-rescue. So we have a patented design. Worthington is the only company with a patented design with handholds on here. And if we can zoom in, you can see how this, so if someone's in the water, we want them to be able to reach up and hold on to this and either pull themselves along to safety or climb up on the boom and sit on there until they can be rescued. This is a very important feature. It's included with our XL and it's included with our tough boom, although the unit we're showing you here is an older design. So that is a very important feature. The other really important feature on this is how we connect these booms. We have a patented bottom plate and we can show it down here. It's a cast steel bottom plate that allows us to go up to some huge loads, but we get rid of the shackles, the links and other unreliable connections. Now, if you're interested to learn more about this, we have another YouTube video that really explains what this connection is all about. So we have a bottom plate that connects to a heavy duty chain and then we connect another boom right onto that. Same thing with our with our Tough Boom XL, we may use some heavier duty chain in between, but the concept is all the same. We've got a high strength bottom plate, we're connecting it with really high strength chain, and we're just linking these together for an unlimited length. So 300 feet, 500 feet, 1,000 feet, we have installations that have single span lengths that are 2,800 feet. It doesn't matter, we design for the application. So what are some other minor features of these things? What can we do with the booms? Well, we have, fine debris panels. Not every site needs something like this, but this is a panel that goes in between each boom and it connects 
between booms, and I'm going to move over here and slide it down. And what it does is it prevents smaller debris from getting in between the booms because there is a gap in between these booms. On a standard tough boom, oh, you're going to have roughly a, a 13 to 14 inch gap in between the booms. On a tough boom XL, that gap is probably going to be closer to 20 to 21 inches. So, so sometimes some people don't care if it's a debris getting smaller debris getting through, but where that is an issue, for instance, if you're in front of a, a fish conveyance system, you might want to keep all that smaller stuff out. If you're like in the, in the northeast area where you have really bad leaves in the fall, then you might want to consider some of those things. The other thing we do on these is we can put what's called mold in graphics on the booms. And these are graphics that are actually molded in and it conveys a signal. We typically have standard graphics and we encourage you to use standard graphics because it gets expensive if you go to a customized graphics, but don't worry, we have a whole range of standard graphics. Typically, we're gonna have something like Dam Ahead Keep Out, uh, Danger Keep Out or something like that. Those are pretty well the standard graphics. And we put these on the upstream face of the boom. They're highly visible and they serve a great purpose. Other features we can put on the booms, we have customized plates that can sit on top of the booms, they bolt in, and here we can mount uh, solar powered navigational lights, safety lighting and everything else. Now, the booms themselves do a fantastic job at stopping surface debris, but there are situations where you may have higher flows or just where you want to try and get a little more penetration under the water for debris control. Not a problem, we got you covered on that. Whether it's the XL or the standard tough boom, we have our bottom plates are designed to allow us to attach screens. And here you can see an example of a 12 inch screen. So with the tough boom, we would provide you either with a 12 inch screen coming down or with a 24 inch screen. We can go deeper, but typically for the tough boom, I think if we hit 24 inches, which means your screen depth is probably about 30 inches underwater, that's typically adequate. On the Tough Boom XL, we'll go a little deeper. We can go to a four, 48 inch deep screen or a four foot screen uh, because we have more buoyancy, uh, more load capacity, so we can handle those increased loads. So we have multiple screen designs. What you're seeing here is our standard, which is a, a galvanized steel mesh, but we can also put a rubber panel across this. We can close off the gap in between. There's no end to the, to the type of customization we can do for your site. It's really, we're going to talk to you, your sales agent's going to talk to you about what's proper for your site. So these are some of the quick features of the tough boom barrier. You notice something here also. You see we have an orange boom and a yellow boom. And let me tell you something that's so important about these barriers is a statistic you probably don't know. 8% of males are colorblind and 1% of females are colorblind. So what does that mean? It means when they look at a colorblind person looks at an orange boom, it looks like it's gray. Imagine if they're looking at it on a really cloudy day or at sunset or at sunrise when you really don't have dawn or dusk, you don't have good lighting conditions. They're probably not even seeing this boom. So we did some research and here's what we found out. Yellow is the most visible color on the color spectrum. Orange only has about 60% of the visibility and brightness coefficient as yellow does. So what we're doing is we're advising all of our customers for any boom you put in, because every boom we believe also has a public safety purpose. Even if it's for debris control, we're saying put in a yellow boom, don't put an orange boom in because you're gonna get much more value out of it. And friends, there's no difference in cost between orange or yellow, so you might as well go with the yellow while you're at it. There are other features we can do with this. I'm not going to get into it on this video. Really what we want to do here is just to give you an overview of what the tough boom barrier is. We're so glad you took time to watch this and please reach out to your Worthington sales representative and they would be happy to talk to you in greater detail, even bring out a sample so you can kick the tires on it. Thank you so much. We look forward to hearing about your application anytime soon. Thank you.